Okay, so we've seen two strategies, uh, either maximizing the a posteriori probability or maximizing the likelihood function. We're going to take one of these choices in, in the binary um, maximum likelihood case, and we're going to do the analysis to find out exactly what would be the threshold that we would use in our linear sampling receiver in the case of binary transmission and a strategy of maximum likelihood. So we go to our example, and this was the general equation that I am looking for. Here the, the word argument, ARG, means the argument, like which value of J actually did this maximization. So we're looking to find out which J uh, maximizes the A, uh, likelihood function. So that means uh, which J uh, maximizes this exponential. Of course there was a, a term in the front, one over the square root of 2 pi sigma, but that's the same for all the j, so it doesn't enter, enter into that maximization. So now we're just going to start manipulating this equation and try to get it into a form that is, is simpler to, to examine. So binary case, binary case, there's just two choices. So I'm going to choose one if this exponential when I put in a1 here is bigger than the same exponential when I put in 0. So if using 1 gives me a larger value than using 0, then I will choose 1. That would be a more likely um, uh, choice. So I'm maximizing the likelihood. This is known as the maximum likelihood rule in the binary case. So now we're looking here in this box, in the decision box, I'm supposed to be comparing um, the decision statistic with a number, with gamma. Z of t compared with gamma. So what is, what is gamma? So now it's just a question of uh, simplifying this inequality. Uh, to simplify it, instead of being exponentials with z squared, to try and get it into something which I can compare z uh, directly. So I start with this inequality, and I want to simplify it. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the natural log of both sides. The natural logarithm is a monotonic function, so it doesn't change the sense of the inequality. And so I get here the exponent, which is minus z, uh, uh, minus a minus 1, quantity squared, divided by 2 sigma squared, greater than the other. Uh, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by minus 1 over 2 sigma squared, because those are common terms in both of them. Of course, when I multiply by a negative number, I have to flip the sense of the inequality. So now these two are equivalent. I take uh, z uh, minus uh, a1 squared and compare it with z minus a2 squared. And I'm choosing uh, the smaller one. So the idea here is we can think of it in terms of proximity. I have two numbers. I have, if a 0 was sent, the output of the, and there was no noise, I would get a0. If a 1 was sent and there was no noise, I would get a1. So now what I've measured with noise is the z. And so what I'm really saying is, which one's closer? <laughs> am I closer to a1 or am I closer to a0? Because if I'm closer, it'll be smaller. So the equivalent, we're learning that this idea of maximizing the likelihood is the equivalent of saying, uh, choose, you know, whichever is the test statistics, whichever one is closer to which of these two means, choose that one. Um, so and the equivalent would be that z should be uh, greater than the sum of the uh, average, the midpoint. This would be the midpoint of a0 and a1. And uh, we're assuming that a1 is the greater one. It's like arbitrary, but we make that assumption. In which case, if I want to know if it's, it's um, OK, let's just make this simple. <laughs> here's a0, here's a1. The midpoint is here at um, a0 plus a1 divided by 2. So if the z that I observe is actually greater than the midpoint, well, that means it's closer to a1. If it's less than the midpoint, well, then it's closer to a0. So when do I choose 1? I choose 1 when the z is closer to a1. That's what's going to make this quantity, this inequality, true. So now I know what my uh, gamma should be. This is my comparison. Uh, it's the midpoint. It's the midpoint between uh, the two 
uh, nominal values when there's no noise. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the two density functions, the two conditional density functions. Here is the conditional density when the uh, conditioned on a zero being sent. And here is the density conditioned on a one being sent. So they're both Gaussian. So we see the typical Gaussian shape in these two probability density functions. But they have different means. They have the same shape, they're just as fat one as the other because they have the same variance, but the means are different. And again, we're assuming A1 is greater than A0. So here is the uh, graph of these two density functions. So what we're doing with the likelihood function is we're saying uh, we're going to choose uh, um, 1 if it is greater than the um, midpoint between these two. Now, suppose I get a certain value. This is my test statistic. If I were just going to say maximum likelihood, I would actually say the likelihood value um, for this test statistic, if I put that number into this uh, condition on zero, I would get a certain value. I would do 1 over square root of 2 pi, sigma, whatever it is, and I would get this number. And if I plugged in uh, this test statistic into this equation, I'd get this blue number. <laughs> And graphically, we could see that the blue number would be larger than the yellow number. So this would be a larger probability, conditional probability. So the probability given, uh, 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 when I measure z, the probability is more, it's more likely that it was a one cent because that probability, that conditional probability is larger than when a zero was sent. And so because this one is bigger, that's the likelihood strategy. However, I don't want to have to evaluate a complex uh, uh, mathematical evaluation. I don't want to say 1 over square root of 2 pi. I don't want to say sig 1 over sigma, exponential, z minus a. Th that's just a lot of calculation. It's unnecessary. Because um, the equivalent to, to identifying that this uh, mathematics gives the inequality in a certain sense is to say, just find which one's closer. And closer is easier to evaluate. You know, like this distance is smaller than that distance. So that was another way I could simplify it. I could just look at proximity to the mean. But an even easier way, <laughs> instead of having to calculate a distance, how far is this test statistics from A1, how far is this test statistics from A0, I can just define the midpoint. The midpoint, and because of the symmetry of these um, densities, the midpoint is where they intersect. When they intersect, the midpoint, uh, I can just compare the test statistic to this, to this value. So it's like no mathematical uh, manipulations. The only thing I do is a comparison, just an inequality. If it's greater than this um, threshold, choose 1. If it's smaller than this threshold, uh, choose 0. When we use this plot, we get some added information, added intuition on what is going on here. Because if we look at the tail of this distribution, that tells us the probability of error. Because when are we going to make a mistake? Suppose that we truly sent a 1. We truly sent a 1. But because of the noise, instead of being to the right side of the uh, gamma, we were on the left side. The noise just pushed us in this direction. Because the noise pushed us in this direction, and it pushed us enough to go over the threshold, we made an incorrect decision. Because we were, if we had a z which was less than the threshold, then we will choose 0. But it wasn't a 0, it was a 1. So all of the, probability, all of the possibilities, all of the z's that would give us this result would be uh, any z less than, sig, uh, less than gamma. And so the area under the curve gives us the probability that we will have an error. And so now we're going to say, how good is our receiver? And the way we're going to determine how good is our receiver, we're going to say, what is the probability of error of our receiver? And this is going to be the means for us to calculate this probability of error, is we're taking the integral over an interval um, of the probability density, uh, conditional probability density function.